Hi, my name is Vikash Shah and in this video I'm going to be talking about the anatomy of the rectum. So this is a coronal illustration of the rectum and anal canal and I'd like to thank my Radiopedia colleague Andrew Murphy for this illustration. So what we see here is that the rectum is the terminal part of the GI tract or really rather the anal canal is but the rectum leads on to the anal canal. Um, and we see here on a coronal view that most of the wall is made up of the longitudinal muscle layer, but we'll go into detail of the uh, layers of the rectal wall a little bit later. The termination is the internal sphincter, um, and that's surrounded by the uh, external sphincter, which is the continuation of the levator ani muscle. On this coronal view, what we also see is that the rectum is enveloped in this uh, compartment known as the mesorectal compartment, which is lined by the mesorectal fascia and contains the mesorectal fat. Now, within the mesorectal fat, what we see is uh, nerves and uh, blood vessels and lymph nodes. Also in this coronal view, what you can see are these three um, lines, which are the, known as the folds of Houston, uh, which are can sometimes be seen on imaging. And then uh, this over here is the peritoneum and we'll look at the peritoneal reflection in a little bit more detail. Now on sagittal um, imaging, this is a female patient. So again, what we see down here is that the external sphincter muscle um, and the internal sphincter muscle and in between them, we have the intersphincteric fat, which becomes relevant when we're thinking about low rectal cancers. Once again, here we see the mesorectal fascia, um, which contains uh, or envelops really the mesorectal compartment and the rectum and the mesorectal fat. We see the valves again. Anteriorly here, we see the peritoneal reflection. Um, and um, anterior to the lower part, to the mid and lower part of the rectum, we have the, the vagina. And in a male patient, anteriorly, what we see is the prostate, but between the anterior wall of the rectum and the back of the prostate um, is some fascia known as Danone villiers fascia. There's very little fat here in this space. And then we have the seminal vesicles. And then once again, we have the peritoneal reflection. Now, the peritoneal reflection is something that's really important when we're thinking about staging of rectal cancers. And if you look at um, axial slices to the upper, mid and lower rectum, what you'll see is that the lower rectum is entirely contained within the mesorectal compartment, but above the level of the peritoneal reflection, so that's where the peritoneum reflects off the anterior part of the rectum, the anterior and lateral parts of the rectum are variably and increasingly covered by peritoneum, and there is less mesorectal uh, fascia um, being the boundary of the rectum. Um, so let's look at some actual um, images. So on this MRI study, on the sagittal um, pictures, what we can see is that the internal sphincter down here, and then between the two, we have the rectum uh, leading down to the anal canal. Um, all of this area here, this is the posterior mesorectal fat, and then anterior to the uh, low and mid rectum, we have, um, as I showed you earlier, the prostate, which is abutting the um, anterior wall of the rectum very closely. There's an incidental uh, benign cyst here. If we look at the axial views, then what we see is, as we scroll down, this is the mesorectal fascia, which is seen as this thin uh, black line on T2 images. And then um, we have the mesorectal fat here uh, surrounding the rectum. There are blood vessels and lymph nodes. Anteriorly, you have these seminal vesicles. And as you scroll down, what you can see is that as you get more inferior, the volume of fat within the mesorectal uh, compartment becomes less and less as the levator muscle narrows in to towards the anorectal junction and anteriorly we have the prostate now abutting the anterior wall of the, the rectum. The ischioanal fossa is this compartment here outside of the sphincters and on a coronal view again we see all of that detail so the external sphincter which is a continuation of the levator muscle we see the rectum the mesorectal compartment which is lined by the mesorectal fascia, we can see here as this thin dark line, um, blood vessels and lymph nodes uh, uh, within the mesorectal compartment. And sometimes you can also see the peritoneal reflection as a inverted Y or a seagull shaped uh, line, which you can see here, um, reflecting off the anterior wall of the rectum. So once again, on the sagittal image, I want to highlight to you the peritoneal reflection here of the anterior wall. And then on this um, particular study, one, what I want to show you is this. This is the tumor within the rectum and the importance of the rectal uh, wall 
Um, so here what we see is that there is no tumor, when this is all tumor tissue, going through the outer layer of the rectal wall, which is the muscularis propria. So this is a very smooth contour. Um, and therefore, this tumor cannot be any worse than T1 or T2. So let's go back to this image. What we see here is this is the mucosa, which has got this crinkled appearance. And then deep to that, we have the submucosa. And then finally, the muscularis propria, which is the outer layer. If a tumor is um, contained, uh, confined rather to the mucosa, then it's T1. If it extends to the muscularis propria, that means it's T2. But on MRI, we really can't readily differentiate between T1 and T2 tumors with the resolution that we currently have. Um, so that last tumor that we saw did not go through the muscularis propria, so that would be T2 at the worst. When a tumor penetrates the muscularis propria, um, then it's a T3 tumor. Um, and usually it's got a nodular, lumpy, bumpy configuration to that pushing margin. So let's look at an example. Well, I'll show you an example in a moment. Another thing to be thinking about is the invasive margin of the, the tumor. So um, on this particular image, what we see is that the tumor is invading here between the four o'clock position all the way around to around the eight o'clock position. And what you'd see internally are these heaped up margins, um, which endoscopically would you'd see as the kind of edges of the tumor, the heaped up, rolled up edges. And centrally, there may be some necrosis. But this is important biology to be aware of because this can help you predict where exactly the tumor is invading in which direction and therefore uh, where to look for a potential involved resection margin so on this particular example what we see is that the tumor is invading between here between the six o'clock position all the way around to around about the 10 or 11 o'clock position and there's a nodular kind of lumpy bumpy margin to where the tumor is infiltrating through the muscularis propria and these are these heaped up margins that I was talking about. Okay, so this is one heaped up margin. There's another one up here. And so these are just kind of um, tissue that's been pushed back from the um, invading edge of the, the tumor. And you can see that this is well clear of the mesorectal fascia. So there's a large gap between the edge of the tumor and the circumferential resection margin. So the importance of that is that if the tumor goes through the muscularis propria and then reaches the, the mesorectal fascia, then that we would call that a threatened resection margin. And the reason is that the um, anatomy that the surgeons use to remove the tumors relies on knowing where this mesorectal fascia is. So the operation is known as a total mesorectal excision and they remove the rectum on block within this mesorectal compartment. So if the tumor does not reach the mesorectal fascia, that's good news. That means you're not likely to um, be cutting through tumor during the resection. So here's an example of a tumor where there are multiple sites of nodular infiltration through the muscularis propria of tumor, such as over here, another back here, and many of these little blobs of tumor tissue extend to touch this line here, which is a mesorectal fascia. So the mesorectal fascia would be invaded and therefore we'd say that the circumferential resection margin here is threatened in numerous different locations. Another um, important aspect to be aware of is tumor extending out of the rectal wall into local vessels, and this is known as extramural venous invasion, and then maybe leaving small deposits of tumor tissue along the way, and these are known as tumor deposits. And there's been increasing awareness of the importance of these two entities in the last few years because they um, increase the rate of metastatic disease from rectal cancer and of local recurrences. So on imaging, this is what you'd see. You'd see the tumor extending in a sapiginous fashion out of the rectal wall along the um, vessel, and then there might be a little deposit of tissue here along the way. And it's important to be aware that tumor deposits interrupt the path of these vessels, whereas lymph nodes do not interrupt the path of the vessel. So that's how you differentiate between them. And then we've talked about T1, T2, T3. What about T4? So if the peritoneum is invaded, as it is in this case, then that's T4A. And if an organ is invaded, such as a prostate here in this anterior male uh, rectal cancer, then that's a T4B. So for example, 
here anteriorly there's a tumor it's a circumferential tumor but anteriorly it's invading the posterior wall of the rectum um, here so this would be classified as a t4b tumor just a word on low rectal cancers um, although biologically they behave the same way as other rectal cancers because of the specific anatomy they're dealt with differently there's less room for the cancer to grow out through the muscularis propria before it starts hitting other structures and invading structures such as the external sphincter and so that means the surgery is different so on this axial view we see this really bulky fleshy tumor and as we scroll down you can see that it's actually invading the anterior half of the internal sphincter on the coronal views again we see a very fleshy bulky tumor extending to involve the internal sphincter but not really extending into this very important space this fat space here the lower part of the mesorectal compartment which continues to become the intersphincteric fat space now the reason that's important is because if you have a low rectal tumor um the surgeon won't really want to do a total mesorectal excision because um, they'll be cutting here too low to be able to form a comfortable anastomosis that won't break down. So what they'll do is they'll come down the mesorectal fascia, extend down the intersphincteric plane, remove the rectum and the anal canal, close off this space and the patient will be left with a permanent stoma. However, if the tumor is quite low or extending into this um, fat space, you're not going to be able to comfortably come down here and cut down this plane without leaving tumor behind. So what they'll do is take a wider plane and that's known as an extra levator abdominal perineal resection or an elate procedure. I hope that's been useful. Thank you very much for watching.